Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Hope you guys have been enjoying the content on the channel as of late. As you can tell, we are doing the microphone thing again. Um, doing the um, the edit version where I just uh, work with the microphone and just give you guys some photos and all that sort of stuff. Um, doing this again purely because I want to test it out just to see if you guys like this format. And also, uh, just currently just exhausted and... Uh, kind of fighting off some uh, vertigo at the moment, so just wanting to take it a little bit easy today. Um, so I figured just to do just the uh, just the voice recording and not all the camera stuff. So, um, but uh, for today, I want to address a certain topic for today, and it's an interesting one because um, it's something that it's we've sort of discussed time, but I kind of want to dedicate a video to it. And that's about stereotyping stories. Now, when I say stereotyping stories, there's the obvious, you know, cliches, um, you know, things that people find in films that, that are, you know, in terms of like plot points, in terms of just characterizations, developments. I'm not here to talk about that. I mean, I think we can all pick out, you know, what cliches are in film. I'm wanting to speak more about just the portrayals in, uh, in narratives and how they come about being stereotypes in really the modern, you know, era, because this hasn't been a thing, um, you know, in the earlier years, it's, it's more uh, dominant today. Um, so the term I want to use for the stories for today, um, and to kind of give you a counterpoint to those stories, is the term victim stories. Um, and by I mean by a victim story is simply this, is that it's a story that portrays a person or a community of people that believes to be the truth, quote unquote truth, to their suffering. So it's, you know, it's a story that revolves around their, the hardships of, of such and such because of such and such, and thus the world around them is against them, and that they are always going to be put, put in a hard position because of it. Um, for example, and again, just to illustrate my point, uh, certain communities of people like the LGBTQ community, their stories are always about exploration and about, uh, hiding and, uh, black stories after, uh, you know, stories about the black community are always about oppression. Uh, female driven stories are always about domination over men and toxic masculinity. Um, these are all stories that portray, these sort of people as people that are suffering and in turn creating a, a it really just manipulative and just very close-minded perspective as to just what those stories can be. It's not to say that these stories don't exist. Of course they do. There are definitely stories of people who have been oppressed, people who are, uh, who have dealt with toxic individuals, whether that being men or women, LGBTQ members sometimes, yes, there are people out there who can be against those against those sort of people and their personas. Um, it's not to say that those stories don't exist. To say that that is the only story that you can tell, I think, is very limiting. And I think that that can create a certain viewpoint. And within that, instill of a, uh, instill of a victimization and a insecurity within the viewer, or just generally speaking, our sensibilities, our perspectives in the world at large, you know, I just, I don't think it's informative of the world that we live in today. These sorts of stories, the way that they're using, the, the way that they're portraying these stories, I just don't think is is accurate. Because the honest versions of, of these stories, which is the version I want to see more of, is stories that remove these biases in favor of presenting an unfiltered view of the events taking place. So for example, to use the same examples but in a different light, instead of having black stories be always about oppression, how about just about the culture and just, well, the people? I mean, regardless of skin color, even take a step further than that. If like, if you want to tell an Asian story, just tell the story that just happens to have Asian people in it. They tell a story of, of a, uh, of a, uh, of Mexicans. You know, just what does it matter if they are Mexican or not? Just tell a story that 
happens to have Mexican people at the center of it and about their culture, you know, less to do with the actual race. Because at this point in our society, I feel that these sort of stories just don't really serve as much of a purpose. Because what do these stories reflect about our world today, about, about racism, about oppression? They do exist. Absolutely, they still exist today. No one's saying that. But what is the intent in showing these stories, other than reciting lessons and ideas only to victimize yourself and those around you? I mean, am I wrong in saying that? I mean, that seems to be the whole motive in showing these stories, to instill some some sympathy or to elicit some sympathy for people who perhaps aren't in that position or are not seeing what the sort of the real treatment of what of what they're receiving, which is that they're just being treated fairly by the system or being treated by other by other people fairly, but they've been warped into believing that everything has to be about their race or about their skin color. Thus, they victimize themselves in the process. So, um, and LGBTQ stories should just also be the same idea. It should be about the culture. It should not be about, um, about, um, about, you know, exploring identity and, and then thus manipulating that sort of idea again, because it's a biased point of how they show off those sort of things. Um, it should be more about the real impact to their mentality, what that means to them, you know, not just for them, but also on the outside of that, what that looks like and what it ultimately might actually be in turn. Um, and with female-driven stories, you can have charismatic, fun, and co- or compelling characters that function well on their own without dominating over men, generalizing them, or talking down to them. You don't have to do stories like that because... Again, what are you trying to say in doing that every single time? It's it's just not an accurate portrayal, and it's just not an accurate depiction. It's a depiction that happens, that definitely happens, but it's to say that that is the norm to make a, to, to again, to generalize a certain topic or to generalize a certain community of people. I just don't think that that's appropriate. And I think that that creates a bias and a certain flavor in your story that at this point is just redundant. We've seen these sort of stories time and time again. Uh, I'm not going to get into like the whole woke culture thing. I'm like, that's, I mean, you guys know my politics, so I'm not just going to get into that sort of thing. But, um, but it seems to me that, that people are more aware as to it now and people are kind of getting tired of it of just seeing these sort of stories play out over and over again because they recite the same sort of ideas and less to do with just distinction. They're fine with just being in the same pot over and over again. Like, just recently with the film Origin I just saw, I mean, it's another film about oppression. It's another film about, you know, a, a community of people that are not being treated fairly, and it's just... It's just getting, it just it's just getting repetitive, and it's just getting, to be frank, exhausting, hearing these points over and over again. Because it is, if it's the only thing that you can say about your 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 community or about just you as a person, I mean, is it really fair, or are you just victimizing yourself? Are you just presenting your insecurities to us? Because that's what it really feels like to me. And less more less so of an importance of of story, um, because even with like historical figures, people who have dealt with these sort of things, again, the reflection of why we are utilizing these figures, why we have to use these sort of um, events in today's language, like ultimately just using them, like we there's a reason behind it. We understand them. I understand the motivation behind it. And it's just not as interesting and not as honest because it just doesn't really reflect our culture today. Generally, our culture of the world at large, it just do- generally doesn't. So um, so I think that, that storytelling needs to escape its stereotype by escaping its ego and escaping a certain bias that, that screenwriters and just generally with storytellers nowadays are just hacking into their stories. And I get that that's the whole point is that storytelling is all about perspective. But if the perspective is always one and the same, which 
in my opinion, feeds to the whole culture of today because it's like these the Gen Zs and everybody, they all just want to float within the same, they all just want to be in the same sphere. Where's the distinction? Where's the personality? Where is the actual honest uh, storytelling? It's rather absent because if everyone's all the same, most are probably fake, you know, and or most are not as as real. And also, like I said, just gets repetitive and just a bit boring. So, so I think that there's le- there's need, a need to be less victim victimizing and more just just being cool, you know. Just tell stories about people. I don't care about their race. I don't care about what this and that. Like <clears throat> most times, it doesn't define that person. So why is it so that we make it that that is the only definition? Like. It's an interesting topic, and I think that um, it's something that I feel that, <clears throat> excuse me, I think it's something that people talk about more so nowadays, and I'm glad that the topics are like this are being discussed, because I think it motivates or hopefully will change the trajectory of just how we tell stories. Um, I doubt it, just because this is sort of just the mentality now um, in our society is to just be very victimizing, but... Um, but but I think that there should be a less of a bias and more of just honesty, because that's where the best stories come from, is in honesty, and not much in the 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 slander or the um, the victimization. So, so, so those are my thoughts. Uh, I this might be a very just you know kind of a con- controversial point, but you know it's just how I feel. Um, but you guys let me know. Do you guys think that these sort of stereotypes exist in these narratives? Or do you not see that and you just see very rich uh, storytelling? I don't, personally. I want to see just a different form. Less of a, like I said, less of a concern for certain topics. Because it's just it's just not the, the point of the said community or people. It's just an aspect at this point that does happen. It definitely does, but to generalize it and say that it happens like all the time and everybody has deals with it or this and this and that, it's just it's just not an honest point or just a real point at this point. So But um and to just kind of put yourself in camps as well, like saying that we the pe- certain people are like this, certain people are like that. It just like what's what is really the truth of what you're getting at? So, but, but you guys let me know, let me know all your thoughts in the comment section below and that's going to be it for this video guys. Thank you guys for tuning in and until then, I will catch you guys in the next video.